Whoa. Um, as you can see here, season one, season two, season three, season four, and season five. Better call Saul. I'm going to uh, give my overall thoughts of uh, uh, this series, but specifically. Uh, series finale of Better Call Saul. Um, I've mentioned Breaking Bad before, and I do plan to talk about all the seasons of Breaking Bad and then also all the seasons of Better Call Saul, um, especially once, you know, the sixth final season is out. Um, so, you know, th there's going to be spoilers. Um, so if you've not seen Better Breaking Bad or El Camino, um, which I've also talked about here on this channel before, um, or Better Call Saul, you know, then, you know, don't watch it. You know, watch this video. Don't watch it. Um, unless you don't care about spoilers, but um, I think it would be a, kind of a shame to you know, uh, watch something that you haven't seen and you, um, like you have an interest in seeing, but then you just, you know, you don't. Um, and it's, but then you go and watch, like for whatever reason you haven't seen it, but then you go and watch something which spoils certain aspects of the show, um, which... I've heard how if you spoil something, uh, like the ending, it doesn't completely ruin anything, but what it does is you leave out a bunch of important information as to what led to the ending. So in a way, you know how something ends, and yet you still don't know how uh, everything will like come together. Um, um, I guess in a way that might be true. But still, if you haven't seen this show, Breaking Bad, El Camino, if you've seen none of this or only a little bit of that, um, and perhaps never seen this show, you might, might have only seen Breaking Bad, and then perhaps El Camino, and never watch this, then don't watch this uh, video, um, you know, it, so, yeah, this show is just amazing. Um, I just wanted to say that. Uh, I think I've mentioned that before, that a few times I've talked about Breaking Bad. Um, but all of this stuff was amazing. You know, the minds and the people who have made this show and everybody involved do incredible work. And, uh, yeah, you're going to be seeing this video later, you know, right after, instead of me posting it right after, and, like, seeing the episode and have it sit for a while, you know, you're going to, I'm going to wait to post this, just because, I don't know, it's just, it's, you know, there's a lot of thoughts I have, uh, good thoughts, but it's just like, you know, Man, uh, what a finale, you know, and especially a finale of this world. Um, this Breaking Bad world is officially done. Apparently they have no plans to ever make anything related to this franchise again. You know, uh, any time in the near future at least. So with all of that, it's like, it's just, wow. Uh, watching Breaking Bad from 2008 to 2013, loved it. And from 2015 to 2022, this show has been incredible as well. You know, seeing the lawyer, like the scumbag lawyer, 
<clears throat> of Walter White and Jesse Pinkman from Breaking Bad and seeing what made him become what we see on that show. And it's a very sad and tragic story. Um, and the sixth season, this season with the finale, the final one of the uh, final episodes, you really get to truly see the things that led up to him being Saul Goodman, embracing Saul Goodman. He just like certain aspects that were keeping Jimmy McGill alive, essentially. You know, it, uh, once certain stuff or certain things were gone, he just embraced this Saul Goodman sleazy uh, persona he created for himself to deal with the pain that he has loss of his brother um, seeing Howard die in front of him his wife whom he, he truly loved you know die or not die but just leave him and, and I guess with the dying part you know really that was the end of Jimmy McGill once that happened and then, you know, the two of them divorce. Um, and things go along for him as Saul Goodman. Has quite a bit of money. But he's not happy. He's just, you know, not happy. And um, Breaking Bad happens. And by the end of that show, he has to be on the run. And in every season, like, until the, the sixth season, uh, the first episode would always open with him and his new identity as Gene Takovic, a Cinnabon manager. And we see him going about his life. He's not happy. He's... know uh, just you know trying to pine for the good old days where he could be Saul Goodman excuse me you know he he was able to just be this creation be uh, somebody who could be could get people out of trouble uh, who you know had no chance of uh, getting off of whatever crime they were being charged with you know uh, be it because of their priors or just because of the crime in general you know, he has a way with words and he was able to use his words and like magic and just get out of You know, he was able to get people out of whatever their uh, predicament they were in. And, um, you know, as the show went on, Better Call Saul, I remember uh, in season four, by the end, when we see him going to be like, it's all good, man. Or, it's all good, man. And he, it's going to be practiced law under Saul Goodman I'm like I don't want this to happen you know I do not want Saul Goodman to become because you know uh, uh, you grow to like Jimmy McGill yes he makes mistakes yes he uh, has made choices he shouldn't have um, that may not have necessarily come back to bite 
him necessarily, but somebody else, definitely. Um, but even with all that, there's like a humanity and there's this conscience that he has that you just like. No matter whenever he screws up, whenever he, you know, has done something stupid that, you know, we all know he shouldn't have done it. And even he knows he shouldn't have done it, but he did it anyway. And it's like, well, it's that's how it is now. And you can't just uh, undo it. He really, uh, he was really... There's just something about him that you just liked. He didn't like every decision, every choice he made. Um, but you liked him. Um, and then, fifth season, you know, he's Saul Goodman. And he makes certain choices, or again, you're just kind of like, stop. And then, with this season, he's made various choices, though particularly with Howard, you know, he, he was reluctant to have anything to do with, like, a plan to, uh, tarnish and set Howard Hamlin's career back, um, but he did so because he, you know, loved Kim, Kim Wexler, his wife, uh, he loved her, he didn't want to disappoint her, he didn't want to upset her, make her mad, or anything. You know, he loved her. You know, he, again, I think by the end of the show, you could still say he still loves her. You know, he really, you know, wants also her approval. She is somebody who does love him, and for who he is, flaws and all, she understands him. And it's because of like that he doesn't want her gone from his life. But then they start doing this uh, scam and to get all this stuff going. And you know, whenever I go back to rewatch this, I'll go into more detail what I mean. But anybody who's watching this knows. But that of course blows up in his face. You know, and Lalo shows up. Um, kills Howard you know, and we all, I think we all know who Lalo is he needs no introduction he's made an introduction of his own in the fourth season he just he shows up and just uh, yeah he's just just charming that's, that's really the best thing you can really say he's charming um he, yeah, and uh, we all know what happens to also him by the end of this, but this finale, uh, which technically even is multiple episodes from episode 10 through 13, you know, uh, these four episodes, which a lot of it revolves around the gene timeline, where he's, you know, black and white. And he's, you know, he's having to deal with, uh, um, he's having to deal with a cab driver who knows who he is and doesn't want anything said about him that could possibly, you know, make him, uh, uh, made by the police. So, you know, now he befriends, uh, Jeff, the cab driver's mom, Marion, played by Carol Burnett, who is, who is incredible on this show. She was just fantastic. You know, concocts a scheme to make it so that you know, you know, crimes are committed, like in, like a mutually assured destruction where if one goes down, the others go down, and you know, 
uh, it's just one of those things where everybody understands each other and then you know he can't stand um, like doing nothing um, you know after this was done he, he has to do more of it um, which he probably was always going to do but you know he does it due to the fact that he has a conversation with Kim she's in Florida in the current present of the timeline in black and white and uh, she's living a fairly normal nothing too special life and he calls her conversation doesn't go the way he wanted it to and uh he gets upset he does goes more all in on these uh schemes to get you know money and all this stuff kim goes to tell howard's uh, wife what happened to him and how you know she, she doesn't know if anything will happen to him or her because you know there's no physical evidence, witnesses left to, to really say anything other than Rex's husband. What she covers up by saying, like, you know, if he's still alive. Um, he, uh, so Jimmy's just so, your gene is so into this whole committed to doing these scams of ripping people off stealing like their information their identities and selling it and all that good stuff so, not well bad stuff but you know in that moment in his mind he's good fine whatever by the time anybody notices anything you know it, it's gonna be months and all that and so um this one guy is, has cancer. This one dude who's been going in and getting all the information needed to sell it um, for Gene and Jeff and Buddy, who is the guy who would go in. You know, Buddy doesn't want to do it because the guy has cancer and he feels bad. So uh, Gene's going to go and take, it, take care of this himself. He's going to go and... Uh, just uh, go in, break in, go around and look and find the information needed. Then, you know, should go out. But, you know, there's cops there you know, parked uh, behind Jeff's cab. You know, they're, they're just they're talking about whatever, like, you know, you know, taco and how, like, this, does, this doesn't look like like a like a fish taco or a proper one or something of the sort and it was like this is just bad and so uh jeff panics and crashes into a car gets arrested and gene's able to get home jeff calls gene to help get him out and um he's gonna do so he's also gonna get marion involved who this point has been a bit suspicious, you know. Uh, gonna go hang out with Jeff Moore, as opposed to doing what before, you know, being with Marion primarily, but then so same with Jeff here and there. Uh, and then he says stuff about like you know Albuquerque, how they don't do that in Albuquerque, you know. Well, this isn't like Albuquerque at all. What you do is you go in, you pay the bail and then get to go out you know all all's good but the fact that he seems to you know says albuquerque gets her gears turning and then she has a computer that jeff bought and she's gonna go and she types in you know albuquerque and con man and you know up he pops as big as day you know Better call Saul. And, uh, you know, he 
was gonna like threaten Marion, like taking the phone line and tying it around his hands as if he's gonna like strangle her and he's warning her not to, you know, use the life alert. He takes a hold of it, she says, I trusted you, and then he just, you know, of course, lets go. Um at which point she then pushes it and then he runs out the door because she's just told the life alert of the, uh, what it is or who he is and that she he threatened her and is in her home and then he runs out the door and in this final episode we see he's you know He runs out, goes, uh, gets into the car, and then he drives off. But, you know, she's described the car, what color the car it is, and says what the license plate is. And then he's off, uh, go home to <clears throat> get his box with diamonds and uh, other stuff that he needs to uh, go and... Get a new identity to relocate. Um, but, you know, he gets caught. He's going to go to prison. He's able to get it to where he'll do like seven and a half years. Um, um, finds out Kim said about, said something about the, uh, Howard uh, and his... Uh, uh, what happened there and how finds out she might be getting sued by uh, Cheryl Howard's wife in like a civil court could take everything and so he goes and devises a plan so that she, uh, nothing really happens to her you know and he goes at the end of it all he goes to prison uh, for 86 years and how uh, <clears throat> you know, the, the two of them uh, you know, Kim and visits him they smoke again one last time and then in these in that moment the, because the only color are like the Better Call Saul ads reflecting on his glasses, on Jean's glasses. And in this moment, and they are together, she lights a cigarette and we see the flame, the color of the flame, and then the, the end of the cigarette as they're inhaling it. Which is a callback to the first episode and also something that they would often do throughout this show where they're sharing a cigarette together and uh and of course there's stuff before and you know after uh, in between all that you know moments important moments with um uh, Jimmy and uh, you know, Jimmy and Mike Saul and Walt, you know, Brian Cranston has a cameo here, as he did in the episode Breaking Bad of this show. Aaron Paul also was in that episode, and also in the previous episode, Waterworks. And, um, you know, uh, he al we also got to see Chuck McGill one last time, so Michael McKeon reprised the role and gets to interact with Jimmy, and these interactions were truly important you know the first two times was like you know with you know time travel and what you would do if you had a time machine would you go back in time would you fix something would you do something different you know and these moments are really important um you know it you know he really does take responsibility he finally you know takes responsibility for his actions, you know, in this show and the, uh, his actions in Breaking Bad. 
he is allowed. He's also Jimmy McGill again. So, like Jimmy McGill died once Kim left him, but then he comes back. He lets go of Saul Goodman and. He's just that, basically, he seems at peace. And honestly, this was the best outcome, I think, um, for him, uh, for this character of Jimmy McGill, Saul Goodman, Gene Tactic, whichever you want to call him. Perfect ending. Just like, you know, Walt had a perfect ending, you know, and in Breaking Bad, he dies. Jesse got a perfect ending. He gets to, he gets to go away. He gets to have a, he gets away. He gets to have his, the new life. He gets to have, have a fresh start. And Jimmy gets to have the trifecta. You know, he uh, that he goes to prison. And it's for 86 years. But, um, you know, he, uh, with good behavior, who knows, he might be able to get out in 2025, 20, perhaps. I mean, you never know. You know, he's, though he is in his mid mid to late 40s, I believe, on this show, the character, in 50s, early 50s, so who knows, he, basically he'd be an old man by the time he would actually be able to get out of prison, you know, with good behavior, you know, he's at peace, he's accepted responsibility, he's taken responsibility for, you know, what he did to his brother with Howard, with all the things that we had seen him do in this show. And even, <clears throat> um, I guess even in Breaking Bad too, you know, all the stuff like he did all that for money. You know, he didn't do it because he was afraid of Walt as he was able to convincingly sell to get him that seven and a half year prison sentence. You know, he, he come clean. He is just like he's, like I did all this and I'm not making any excuses for it anymore. It is why I did it. And yeah, and that's the perfect way for his character to end. Um, hopefully, perhaps, you know, he would be able to get out of, prison early you know maybe 20 25 years or so something like that would be too early or so um but you never know i mean i have a feeling that if he did get out and he'd be like in his 70s or 80s he wouldn't really be doing what he would he'd do again he would just he'd just be at pace, be Jimmy McGill, and he'd probably live a life that'd be very quiet. And, you know, that's, that's something that he, you know, really would, you know, probably something he always kind of like wanted. You know, he had all this fun, <laughs> he, he, you know, and some of it's genuine, some of it was part of a facade. I, I, Though I'm sure some fun did come out of it, of that, but probably wants to live a fairly quiet life, and you know, that's not that, that's not bad, you know, especially when he uh, met Walter White. That just kind of upended things, and Jesse Pinkman and all. This show wrapped up. so well I just you know I you know, 
that's the kind of music. I don't know. It's it's just incredible. You no, know, there's only so much, so many words I can really say. It's just great, a great show, great ending, great universe that this show is associated with. You know, Breaking Bad and El Camino. It's just, just excellent. Um, great ending. I couldn't have thought of a better uh, way for it to end. Yeah, I just, I loved it, and, um, I'm, <clears throat> I'm sad and it's over, but I'm happy it is, too, because I would, would not want this to continue to go on and on for many seasons, and then just be like one of those shows that has been on for so long that you're just one, you're just like... That show's still on? Like, when's it ever gonna end? Um, it always sucks when that happens with the shows. You know, they go on longer than they should. But Breaking Bad went out at the right time. And Better Call Saul went out at the right time. And both are at their best. Ended at their best. And that's really what you could hope what you really would hope for and um the show delivered and i'm happy it did um when i get season six i will probably begin to then rewatch breaking bad uh all over again possibly mention el camino and then go through better call Saul. Um, so at, at the least that would be some months from now um, sometime when season 6 will be on Blu-ray you know I hope this season you know Better Call Saul wins big at the Emmys for this year and next year because they're qualified for two years because of how this season was broken up into two parts and how the Emmys have their uh, their cutoffs as to when a certain time frame for being eligible for a show begins and ends. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I would think that this show would get to have some Emmys finally after all this time. You know, Breaking Bad at least won one Emmy at the bare minimum uh, every year. Uh, it was nominated and acknowledged. Um, as of now, it's like, you know, uh, 46 nominations as of now. For first part of the sixth season being included. And no wins. Um, so hopefully, you know, Bob Odenkirk will win his long-awaited Emmy as uh, Jimmy McGill, Saul Goodman, Gene Takovic, um, Rhea Seahorn. Hopefully, she'll get she'll get her Emmy. Hopefully, the show will win Best Drama and Writing and all that good stuff. And I hope the next part of the season will be acknowledged quite a bit next year um and of course you know emmy uh, emmys and awards don't really you know they don't really matter but you know it's like what you want a show like this when there's awards that are supposed to honor the best you know you want the best to actually not only get acknowledged by being nominated but then also win um you know it's like a i think a john ham situation where Bob Odenkirk didn't get to win for the first season because, you know, for acting because John Hamm hadn't won before for Mad Men or any time he was uh, nominated uh, for an, uh, an Emmy. <clears throat> so for the final year of Mad Men, which went up against the 
Better Call Saul, his first season, you know, it went to John Hamm. Um, not surprising, but disappointing that John Hamm didn't get to win at least once um, before the final season. But, you know, that's how many award shows are. They kind of realize their mistake, and they're like, well, we're going to rectify that now with the last season. So hopefully Odin Kirk and this show as a whole will get the John Hamm treatment and not like Steve Carell, who for his final uh, episode on The Office, you know, he, you know, as Michael Scott, as a main character, you know, he didn't get to take home an Emmy when he should have. Um, so he's, he was nominated for many Emmys always lost so let's hope for the John Hamm outcome for uh, Better Call Saul um, but yeah at some point down the line I will talk about Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul in more detail uh, with each season um, and yeah I will just uh I just wanted to let my thoughts out on this incredible show and universe this show is in that is now over. Share more of my fondness for it and now I love it and I'm sad that it's go it's gonna go away uh, now, but we'll live on forever on physical media and streaming and uh, reruns on like AMC they ever decide to do that here and there like they seem to do for Breaking Bad um yeah apologize for all of this it's just I wanted to get something out for this the finale of this show and just my overall general thoughts on this TV show because I really haven't talked too much about it I think I've mentioned it here and there um, but I really love this show. It's one of the greatest shows of all time. It's definitely one that if you have seen Breaking Bad, if you haven't seen this show, you need to see it. Um, I'm just going to say that. It's well worth it. It may be slower paced, but the slow pace is, it is worth it. It focuses more on characters, you know. You know, the way they, uh... <clears throat> It was characterized by Vince Gilligan, the creator of Breaking Bad and co-creator of this, and the writer and director of El Camino. He said, with uh, Breaking Bad, it was drama, like suspense, with some comedy. With Better Call Saul, it was drama, comedy, with some suspense. The suspense and the thrills and stuff of that nature and action that you see come through on this show when those moments happen they're really impactful because they're not in like every episode or every other episode so unlike you know Breaking Bad where many episodes there were quite a bit of violent moments because you know you know it's you know drugs and the cartel and violence and all that kind of world it's huge you know it's, it's that that comes to be part of the you know business you know violence is well part of that business and um yeah it's just it's a slower show but it's well worth it i think um and you know people are like what's better uh Better Call Saul, Breaking Bad, and, you know, recency bias, you know, does exist. Um, so to answer that question, I would say Better Call Saul. And I have thought about that for some time, really around the fourth season. Just there's just something about Better, 
Better Call Saul that I really loved. I mean, of course, it was my favorite show as it was on. But, you know, whether it was better than Breaking Bad this season, I really started to think it actually might be. Because prior to it, I'm like, you know, it's fairly on the even keel, fairly, you know, you know, even. Um, but here, it's just, you know, I think by the end, I think, yes, Better Call Saul is better. But that does not mean Breaking Bad is less. Both shows are incredible. And um, and I might be place Better Call Saul just a place higher than Breaking Bad. But that place would be, like, very, very close. Where, like, the, you, know, you could barely see any like, real difference as to, like, how close they are that's that's how it is for me um, but yeah I love I love this show of Breaking Bad and El Camino um, great world and universe great characters and writing and acting and direction and everything um, these shows are or should be a standard for uh, television, you know, dramatic television, you know, and episodic television. This should these shows should be the standard. I just want to say that. Um, and yeah, that's really it. Um, I really don't have anything else to say other than that might be kind of just rambling. Um, but I guess to determine whether I, this still is higher than Breaking Bad, in my view, I guess whenever I cover all the seasons of Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul, we I guess we I'll, we shall see if that is remains the case for me. Um, but until then, uh, I hope all of you are having a you know great day, a great week great weekend and I will see you all next time. Bye.